time conflicts. I guess as an elected sheriff, it's better to be wanted than not wanted. I do have a couple more uh, speaking engagements this afternoon. So um, it, I agree with you. It looks like a lot of people are interested in, in the drug take back and um, I'm sure many people are already conducting these and hopefully there's a couple pointers um, about how successful we've been here in Penobscot County with our take back. I just want to go back in history just real quick and um, talk about where some of the original drug take backs started. Uh, some of you, many of you I'm sure are aware of uh, what Triad is. Triad are law enforcement services, senior citizens and senior providers that work together in the best interest of our seniors. And while we were working with our seniors, um, it was one of the things that often came up many, many years ago. This actually started, I think it was in Lincoln or Saginaw counties, when um, some of the seniors asked about what to do with their unused and expired medications. And it really brought up an awful lot of conversation about what should be done with them, the safest way to dispose of those. So to my knowledge, that's actually here in the state of Maine, how the uh, first prescription drug take backs actually took place were through the uh, triads. And we have a very successful triad here in, in Penobscot County and um, has been in place for quite a while. And this is one of the things every time we go to do a scan presentation or whatnot, seniors are constantly asking if we could make sure that we do a drug take back at the same time. So as we move along, uh, you look at the first slide, you can see that the National Prescription Drug Take Back Bay aims to provide a safe, convenient, responsible way of disposing of prescription medication. As we all know, there are serious uh, substance abuse issues in our state. I recall back in the late 1990s when I received a call of a burglary in the town of Etna. And when I went into the home, everything looked in place, the TV was there, the Stereos were there and computers, and I didn't see anything out of place. And the homeowners directed me down to their bathroom area of the home where it was rifled through the medicine cabinet and then into their bedroom where the nightstand cabinets had been rifled through or gone through. And it was the first time that I experienced seeing um, the crime of people looking for prescription medications. And so it, it was clear that uh, at that time in the late 1990s that uh, prescrip prescription drug abuse was becoming a serious issue here in the state of Maine. And then making sure that we properly disposed of those was uh, clearly very important. So can we go to the next slide? Excellent. So why is it important for us to make sure that we have um, prescription drug, drug take backs? Um, prescriptions are often um, the result of thefts. As we know, people can be targeted. I think of my mom and dad who are both in their late 70s and have a large amount of prescription medications. And mom and dad would line them up on the counters or the windowsills of their kitchen which is right next to the main entrance to the home. So if anybody was walking around the home, they could look in and see the type of medications that they've had or would have in that home. So teaching seniors and others how to make sure that we get those out of sight, and that we simply get rid of other medications is important. Accidental ing ingestion uh, by kids or pets is a common thing. Particularly, you'll see the next one, Accidental use of expired medications is a major problem. During one of the drug take backs here in, in Bangor, a gentleman came up to me and provided me with a glass bottle. So I knew I knew his prescription uh, pill bottle being glass, it was certainly older. And I looked on the date, and this was just a couple of years ago, it said 1977 on his glass bottle. And he said it was probably time to get rid of this medication. So it kind of reminds me of paint cans. They, they seem to uh, stack up and store up in your basement because you don't know what to do with them. So they would simply hold on to them and hold on to them and not know what to do with them. And then obviously the misuse of medications can cause serious medical events or abuse as we're seeing. And then uh, being Earth Week that we had, we certainly don't want to endanger the environment by simply dumping those into the septics or dumping them into the landfills. Um, so. Uh, as you'll see on that slide, the next national uh, drug take back is April 29th, and we can talk about that a little bit more as we go along. Next slide, please. So how simple this is to do is it's, it's pretty 
easy to do. Uh, drug take backs uh, were started some time ago and organized by the federal DEA as a nationwide event. Even though smaller agencies, particularly the county sheriffs throughout the nation were doing some of them, it became much more organized many years ago. Something for the state of Maine that's not uh, something that we want to be known for, but we are ranked number one in the U.S. per capita on the amount of prescription medications um, that are taken back during these collections. Now, I won't go down through each of those, but you can see how uh, back in, in 2010, where we were around 7,000, and then the numbers grew as high as 31,000 pounds of medications back in April of 2016. And that's just in Penobscot County alone. Um, the picture there to the right is a picture of a setup, a typ typical drug take back event that we had. Um, this one was at the airport mall off from Union Street in Bangor. We would make it very convenient for folks just to simply roll up and kind of like a drive through restaurant where they don't even have to get out of the vehicles, no questions asked. We'll take their medications and safely dispose of those. But again, you look at the amount of medications that uh, are being taken every year. I thought honestly after our first couple of years that these numbers would start to drop and uh, you know once people had cleaned out the cupboards two or three times that these numbers would start to go away and perhaps after a few years this probably may, may uh, take care of itself but as you can see that's certainly not the case which shows me that there's still a tremendous amount of medication being put out there. Next slide please. So currently there are 127 different law enforcement agencies uh, ready to run 54 different sites throughout Maine. Um, interestingly enough, in Portland and in Bangor, um, we started a little competition, friendly competition on both ends of the state, where we would uh, take uh, uh, advantage of a prescription drug take back on Friday, uh, the day before. Um, when most of the towns and police departments throughout the nation would do that. So we'd run an all day event on Friday. Uh, interestingly enough, the last couple that we've had, we also partnered with AARP and brought in shredding as well. And so folks could uh, take care of their shredding needs of sensitive documents. And I go back to some of the needs of our original triad groups and why it was important to get rid of prescription medications. The same could be said of those sensitive documents. So we really made it a fun event. Um, now, although those events are held twice a year, generally in the spring and in the fall, there are many police departments throughout Maine and other states uh, that were funded through a healthy partnership. And there's a couple pictures, one on the top left-hand side and lower right-hand side of safe uh, di uh, disposal boxes that are put into either the town office or generally they're in the police departments uh, of the municipality where folks can come in and dispose of medications pretty much 24-7 uh, with no questions asked. And that's really the key to this. Um, although there's been many times that folks who are interested in um, doing uh, uh, stats on the type of medications that we're taking back by the exact number and the exact um, kind of medication that was being disposed of. The real concern for us was that if we started to do uh, data collection that it may actually uh, deter people from actually coming in. Right now we take uh, medications in and ask no questions. Although we do ask no questions, it's very interesting to see the amount of stories that folks will tell. Uh, a lot of times this is medication that they were given and they had only used one or two of the medications and had a reaction and then had a full uh, bottle of uh, prescriptions that were not taken. Sometimes these were from family members that have passed away in a family um, and other issues that have come along. And we certainly hear a lot of stories, but, but uh, we do not request inf any information when those come in. So again, you can see that those collection sites can happen all year long, um, and then uh, the two main events on the both ends of the, of the year. Next slide, please. So how do we partner with um, organizations around us to help us out? Um, it's a really a collaboration with law enforcement and our business community and certainly our, our citizens that help us. Uh, you'll see here that uh, this has been headed by the main, uh, the US DEA for several years as a nationwide event. 
and uh, the one year here in the state of Maine when the federal government wasn't in a position to take that on, the Maine sheriffs and, and uh, certainly saw that this was an issue, and we knew that uh, the citizens and, and um, municipal police throughout the state wanted the event to continue. And the Maine sheriffs continued to pick that up and move it along, and, and uh, the DEA were glad that they're back on board with us and working great together. And as you can see, it takes a lot of people to do this planning uh, from the top of Maine to the bottom on this one particular day where we collect. We have great partnerships with many um, private vendors such as Hart transportation who runs trucks at no cost that allow uh, police departments to come together. It's a, quite a plan to locate all of these places throughout the state on that Saturday that runs from 10 to 2 where all these medications are received and they're brought into central locations. They're all weighed and sealed and put into these um, tractor trailers and, and escorted um, all the way down to our friends in uh, uh, southern Maine at, at um, Eco Maine. And uh, they do a tremendous job for us making sure that these medications are incinerated in a safe manner and um, not put back out into the hands of those that could be poisoned by them or certainly in our environment. So again, these are just general collaborations. There's a lot of great ideas, uh, ways to get different uh, folks in, involved. Again, our drug take backs, one of the important things is that folks thought that they could run a take back by themselves. And it's crucial for all to know that you cannot run a take back without having law enforcement there. And when I say that, I'm not talking about pharmacies and, and whatnot or, or medical providers. However, there are you know, Kiwanis groups and rotary groups and, and groups that are trying to do the right things in the community that would like to run these, uh, but they cannot do that without law enforcement participation. So on the next slide, you'll see um, what happens to the prescription medications once they're collected. Uh, you can see that it takes quite a quite a truckload, and, and I go back to the amount of medications that are being brought in in just the state of Maine alone, and how much medications it takes to fill one of those trucks um, and to have them hauled down and then have them properly incinerated. It's quite a process to watch and undertake. Um, and then next slide. So that's a kind of a quick snapshot of how the drug take backs uh, uh, work. Um, again, the next one will be this coming uh, 29th and uh, both in Bangor and in Portland, we'll be running all day events on the 28th uh, where we'll be collecting um, in collaborations, like I said, on um, adding the shredding events, which are wonderful. And then we have folks coming and talking to us about actually adding in uh, e-waste for electronic uh, devices to be uh, taken care of at the same time. So it kind of grows. Uh, it's a great event for the communities. It's a great way to take care of a serious problem. And again, I guess looking at the amounts that we're taking in, it clearly shows me that there's, there's still an issue. One of the questions that, that we constantly get asked is what is the biggest challenge that we have? And I think that is the inability to take back any type of needles. That's really the only thing that we do not take back. Some of the uh, municipal sites um, will not take back uh, liquid materials uh, in their boxes only because sometimes it causes, causes quite a mess if they're not taken care of. However, the day of the event, we do take care of liquids, but we're still not in a position today to take care of needles and we hope that at some point we can rectify that and find a safe way of taking care of um, needles as that's a continued problem. So I hope this is kind of helpful. It's really a, a short, easy program. It doesn't take a lot of funding. Um, our friends um, and uh, contributors take care of and destroy these at cost for us and our trucking companies truck for free. Uh, we do have a quick little uh, example of how your local media will jump on board and help us out. If, and I'll, uh, I'll let you watch that. Okay. 
so we've been very fortunate to have uh, the media coverage provide um, a lot of uh, free PSA time um, on our prescription um, drug take back programs and and uh, we'll be in there again so I'm happy to take any questions and if there's anything we can do certainly to help you with your take back projects we'd, we'd love to uh, share our thoughts So I just unmuted all this, and so if you have any questions for Sheriff Troy, um, you should be unmuted and be able to ask them. Okay. Okay. We'll see you then. Okay. Anyone that has any questions at this point, or are we ready to move on to um, the next presentation? Jessica, it looks like someone had a question about inhalers. Um, Without seeing the question up, I'm guessing the, the question would be, are we able to take care of those? And absolutely we are. Um, we, we do accept those. The only thing that we're unable to accept are the needles and then um, some of the local, you'd have to check with the local area where you drop them off. but the liquid medications are, are a potential problem only because of spills and whatnot. Any other questions? That will move, move forward. Well, thank you, uh, Sheriff Troy, for joining us today. We appreciate you taking the time. And um, his contact information is on the screen. If you do have any follow-up questions, you know how to um, get in touch with him, and um, we wish you the best with the rest of your presentation. Thank you very much. I just did see the quick question that was up there about sheriff's offices having drop boxes. New and one. I, I, believe, I believe every sheriff's office, all 16 counties, have drop boxes at their sheriff's offices, and then most of the municipalities do as well. Somebody's commenting that the Bangor Police Department has one too. Oh, I wanted to see. That's interesting. I'm going to send this to everybody. Looks like no more questions are coming up. So. <laughs> Great. Great. Thank you very yeah, much for having us on and adjusting the schedule, and I appreciate the time. Um, and the main sheriffs always look forward to helping folks. If you need anything, reach out to your local sheriff or your local police department. We'll certainly help. Thank you so much. Have a great day. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and mute. So the next presentation is again by Corey Brown, and she is with Healthy Anders Coggin. And uh, Corey, I just unmuted your phone, so you should be all good to get started. Great, thank you. Um, so thanks for having me today. Um, so I do work for Healthy Anders Coggin. We are uh, part of the Central Maine Healthcare, uh, and our mailing address is here on Main Street, but we're actually located at 124 Lisbon Street um, here in Lisbon. So I'm going to go ahead and move the slide. So Healthy Inner Scoggin was born in 2001 out of the Tobacco Free LA Coalition. And our mission is to empower people to live healthy lifestyles and to improve the public health of the communities we serve through ongoing planning, community action, education, and advocacy. And the picture in the background is of the Androscoggin River, um, and it's looking towards Lewiston from Auburn. Go ahead and move. So just a, a little bit for you guys about Androscoggin County, um, just in case people aren't aware. 
So we have 14 towns in Androscoggin County. Healthy Androscoggin serves 12 of them. Uh, it includes Maine, second and third largest cities, which is Lewiston and Auburn. I mean, Lewiston is the second largest resettlement area for African refugees in Maine. At the last census count, that was about 10% in Lewiston. Um, so Androscoggin County has both urban and rural areas. Urban is Lewiston, Auburn, and the remaining towns are considered rural. And uh, next. So our population, um, according to the last sentence, is 107,702, and that is decreasing, um, almost 93% white, um, and we have 15.4% of persons living in poverty. Um, we are part of the Western Public Health District, which also includes Oxford County and Franklin County. All right, so I'm going to talk um, today about our success with the youth prescription drug misuse um, and linking that to the Medicine Disposal Day events. And we have been doing these events um, since uh, 2010. So we have a quite a large partnership. Um, our business sec sector, we have um, Anascoggin Valley Council of Government. So AFCOG um, helps provide financial sponsorship for the event. They help with advertising, um, and they staff the events with us. Um, they staff the Auburn location, um, and because we do dual locations, one in Auburn, one in Lewiston, that healthy Androscoggin staff, um, and then they also have representation on our planning committee. In the background and all of these slides, you're going to see photos from the events um, throughout the years. Um, in our school sector. We have Lewiston Public Schools. Um, they have a representative of the planning committee, um, and then they help alert all parents and caregivers through flyers and advertising on their school electronic boards. And they also um, provide the location for the Lewiston site um, for the drop-off event, um, and that is at Farwell Elementary School in Lewiston. And then we also have law enforcement, so the main DEA the Lewiston Police Department, Auburn Police Department, and Androscoggin County Sheriff's Department. Um, so they also provide financial support and logistics for disposing of the medications. They all take part in the planning team, um, and they all provide staff for the Medicine Day. They recruit volunteers, um, and they help market it to the community. And then the healthcare sector. So. Um, Bedard Pharmacy provides location for the Auburn site. Um, Central Maine Medical Center Pharmacy, St. Mary's Healthcare all provide pharmacists that staff the event with us. Um, and Pediatric Associates also helps provide some financial support for uh, the day itself. All right, so our process, what we do here. So as soon as the date is set by the DEA, um, I am notified by the Ernst Garden County Sheriff's Department here, and that's when we really begin the planning. So uh, I notify the planning team and we schedule our coordination meeting. Um, I start sending out sponsorship request letters to the community at um, throughout Lewis and Auburn. Um, and then I confirm the locations for all of the sites throughout Androscoggin County, and I'll go over those in a minute. Um, we really, really need to, need to make sure, especially for Auburn and Lewiston, that we have those uh, companies um, on board to, to continue to let us host the sites there. And then I have a list um, of about um, 30 to 40 people that I, and organizations that I contact to see if they have any volunteers um, or any employees that would be willing to volunteer for the day, um, including the co local colleges. Um, we do ask that all volunteers be over 18, though. And then we work on marketing the event, and that really depends upon how much money we have available for that particular event about how we market it. Um, we know through surveys that we've done that the majority of people who come to these events um, hear about it through the newspaper. So that's where we focus um, a lot of our advertising. Um, but we also do um, radio ads and we do flyers throughout town. And then we do a large electronic email. Um, we do 
um, web postings on various sites, um, newspapers, um, and community planning calendars and um, all of those different sites, but the majority of our marketing goes in towards the newspapers. Next. So at the actual event, um, so this is for Auburn and Lewiston sites only. Um, so the volunteers collect the medications from participants. Um, similar to what Chef Morton was saying, they drive up. Um, they do not get out of their cars. We have our volunteers usually working in teams of two. We'll go up to the cars themselves, collect the medications. Um, we actually hand out to every participant information packets. And inside those packets are um, about safe storage and disposal in your home. Um, we also uh, give out tips and tools um, for other things like nutrition and education. Um, we put in all of the locations for our permanent box disposals um, in Androscoggin County. Um, and then any information that anyone else wants to include prior to, we all put in the packet and we hand those out. Um, we do conduct a brief survey. It's five questions. Um, they do not have to take the survey if they don't want to. We do ask them if they mind taking the survey. Basically, we try to find out um, where they're coming from, um, why they're returning the medications, where they heard about the event before, and if they've been to an event before. Um, so the police uh, officers and volunteers will box up and weigh all of the boxes, and you can see just some of those in the background. And, and we also here at Healthy and Scogging log the weights um, so we can have some trend data as well. Um, and then after the event, the Sheriff's Department comes around with his truck um, and trailer, and they pick up all of the boxes that um, have been collected and we'll bring those for disposal. At the other Androscoggin County locations, um, the local police departments and the Sheriff's Office staff those locations, and the Sheriff's Office also picks up those boxes of medications for disposal. So next. So um, our outcomes. So uh, I'm just going to say ahead of time that this data that I'm going to show you um, is specifically for the Lewis and Auburn sites um, because we do not have more data around the other locations. So when you can go ahead and switch the slide. So when we started in 2010, so we went back to the 2009 um, survey of high school students, 30 day use was 9.4%. Um, on the last um, integrated youth health survey in 2015, high school students was 5.1, so that's a decrease of 45.7%. Um, for middle school students in 2009, it was 4.1%, and in 2015, it was 2.7%, um, which is a 34.1% decrease. Um, so we are pretty um, happy with those. Um, obviously, we'd like them to be lower, but. Um, but we're, we're pretty happy with that decrease right now. And next slide. So uh, again, for Lewis and Auburn sites only, um, in May of 2010, we had 132 uh, people come through. And in April of 2016, we, have, we had 497. Um, August this past year was slightly lower than that. Um, we're attributing it to how rainy it was that day. Um, and not as many as people came out, so we're hoping that this Saturday, where it's supposed to be nice, we'll get more people. So you see that we have an increase of almost 280% since this first Saturday of number of households um, that are participating um, in these events in Lewiston and Auburn. So the next. So again, in 2011, 20% uh, of the people who came through had attended before. Um, and you see in October 2017, that jumped up to 75% of people. So we know that people are keep coming back and, and see that this is a community um, event that they like and that they want to participate in and they felt find value in. Um, so we are really happy that um, people keep coming back to it. Next. So number of controlled pills collected in 2010 was 4,722. In April of 2016, the number of controlled pills collected was 12,372. That is between Lewiston and Auburn sites. Um, I, again, I don't have the data from the rest of the um, locations. So 
that is an increase of 162% of controlled sales collected, um, which uh, is, is quite a large number. Um, and we're happy to be able to get those out of the community. So total amount of weight collected. So again, back in May of 2010, it was 300 pounds. Um, in April of 2016, Lewiston Auburn only was 1,765 1, pounds. Um, in October of 2016, Androscoggin County was 2,784 pounds. Um, so again, more people are keep coming back and more people participating um, and our weights, um, the total amount of weights that we've collected has also been increasing. So our permanent medicine disposal box locations, um, we have six of them throughout Androscoggin um, County. So they're at the police departments of Lisbon, Sabatis, Mechanic Falls, and Auburn. And then it's at the Androscoggin Sheriff's Department at 19 Patton Road in Green. And then we also have them in the town buildings of Poland and Turner. So those are the ones that can be accessed at any time. And that's it, that's my contact info. And that's it, so I can take questions too. So I'm going to go ahead and unmute people. Okay. Do you have, this is Debbie Buffington, do you have a listing or an online site I can go to for local? So if you go to the federal DEA website and you type in um, your zip code, you can find out where the locations are around you. Thank you. You're welcome. They're not picking up every year. They are. Maybe not because it's in 2010 and 2016. Well, because they were just showing a difference. Oh, so just but they're still doing They're on unmute. So if you're having a personal conversation, we can hear that. Um, I don't see anyone typing up questions, but, you know, kind of uh, in the rock and the hard place of we'd like to be able to offer one full continuing education hour, and we're only at a little bit over 30 minutes. Um, so I'm not sure if there's anything else that people want to add. Uh, Scott, is there anything that you can uh, contribute uh, to the conversation as well, or are there any other questions that Corey could help answer? Uh, sure. I mean, first of all, I um, hope everyone can hear me. I wanted to uh, you know, definitely thank Corey and um, Sheriff Morton for uh, pre presenting to us today. I mean, it's obviously, it's very timely with the next take back uh, coming up. And I'll I will share. You know, when I before I came back here, I actually worked at Healthy Anders Coggan and um, worked on this event. I have to say, as one of my uh, favorite events that I always looked forward to was, was the take back days and, and part of it really was that collaboration that really has grown there between uh, the different sectors as, as Corey mentioned and I think is probably a large part of the success. Oh, it looks like there's a question that's come up. So whether we take illegal drugs um, or not. So um, no. With a caveat that is that we don't always look in all of the bags that are given to us. Sometimes they're um, closed up. Sometimes they um, have so much stuff in them. People will bring back a trash bag, and and we just don't have the ability to go through everything. So has something stuck through? Maybe we're not sure. But uh, as a general rule, no, we do not collect. And um, we also, like the sheriff says, don't take any needles. Um, we also don't take anything with mercury in it, so like a thermometer we won't take, um, and we don't take any electronic devices. We've had people try to give us like glucose monitors, um, things of that sort, so we don't accept any of those either.
Um, so that you, I would say that you need to check with your local sheriff's department around that, some, um, and or your local police department. Um, I know Auburn police departments will go and collect, um, depending on where it is and, and how much you have to collect. Uh, so I would really recommend uh, contacting either your sheriff's department or your local police department to find out specifically for your community. Thank you. Uh, so the, another question is, where can we get copies of the safe storage? Act? Email me directly, and I'd be happy to email it to you. Um, it's also uh, you can also find them on our website, um, healthyandrewscoggin.org. Hi, Corey, this is Scott again. I wonder if you could speak to um, any collaboration or work you do with veterinarians, as we know with uh, the new uh, prescription, the new uh, PMP law that's passed, veterinarians are being included in that initiative to check the PMP and to you know be part of the, the efforts to uh, reduce the prescription drug issues that we're having. So I don't know if you could speak to that yeah. at all about how that comes into play with your program. Sure. So we do market to the veterinarians' offices. We um, go and visit them and let them know that we are hosting uh, this event and we invite them to participate in it as well. Um, we do accept pet, me pet medications um, at the actual event so people can bring those as well. Um, at this point, we don't do not have any veterinary offices that are part of the planning committee, um, but we we do make sure that we reach out to them during the process and make sure that they're aware of what's going on and offer any support that we can. You take patches and cream. I heard patches, yes, and I didn't hear the second part. Topical cream. Yep, we take all of that, yes. More of a question about the logistics of the program itself. Uh, somebody shows up with, you know, their, their prescription vials full of medication. Do you take the whole vials or do you empty the tablets, capsules out of the vials and then, you know, does, does, does the person retain their vials? How, how is that handled? No, we, t we take it all. We take the packaging and everything. They just have to drop it in. They don't have to take their names off it. Um, they can if they want to, but they can leave their names on it um, because it all just goes into the incinera incinerator. Um, so we we just take all of the packaging as well. And, and this program does will take uh, non-controlled substances as well as controlled substances. Correct. Yes. Yep. And that's why the police, we always have the, and why Sheriff Morton said, always have the police department there. Do not do one without the police department because we do accept um, controlled medications and we just want to make sure that everyone remains safe. The, uh, the, the point was made up a couple times about not taking back needles. Um, mm -hmm. How about things like, uh, you know, pre-filled uh, insulin syringes um, or pre-filled insulin? You know, insulin pens that don't have needles attached, um, but you know they're they're injectable products. Will those be uh, returnable? Oh, thirty. Oh, thirty. Morning. Um, I'm okay. So the pre-injectables that do not have the needles attached to them, as long as there's not a needle attached to it, we can accept it. But if there's the needle, except um, as part of it or something sharp as part of it, then we cannot accept those. So like an EpiPen, which is an auto injector with, with that has a needle, those would not be returnable. Correct. So we could not take an EpiPen. Thank you. You're welcome. It looks like we had a question about barriers in terms of transportation, which is something I remember when I was working on that as well. Some maybe older folks that have a hard time getting there. Have you? Uh, is there anything that you've uh, been looking at? Um, at this point um no that is not something that we you know for like elderly who can't get there um that is not something that we have been able to um find the solution to yet um so if anyone has any suggestions i'm more than happy um to talk to you about that but at, at this point we we do not have 
um, a solution to that problem of, of transportation of people getting to the event. Um, I wish we did because I know that there are, are many, many people um, who would like to dispose of the medication safely and just can't. Um, we do encourage um, with our different organizations with different partners um, and part of CMHC um, around the safe storage in your home. So we do provide that information. And if they can't get to an event, we encourage them to, to practice safe disposal in their home instead. Do you have any other questions? Can, oh, go ahead. I was just going to say that they can also use the, um, in the urban area, here in Lewis and Auburn, we have um, the Auburn Police Department, which is on the bus route. So if they can take the bus, they can always go there and do that. Um, but in the rural areas, it, it is much more difficult. Final disposal, is it incineration when you truck it? It is, yeah. The final, the final through the DEA and sheriff's office is in, in incineration uh, through each domain. Do we have any other questions out there? Okay. Um, well, I think just, uh, just because we do have a little extra time, I just want to take a, a few minutes, first of all, and thank everyone for coming to the webinar. But I wanted to make you aware that AdCare will be looking to do more trainings around different uh, topics around the opiates issue um, as part of our work, our partnership with uh, Maine CDC on the new Santa's FRX grant. So I just want to make folks aware that there's going to be many more trainings uh, coming in various different areas, um, you know, looking at you know, the issue with veterinarians that we spoke about, looking at issues around prevention, around um, recovery, lots of different uh, topic areas. So um, be on the lookout for that. And, and also want to invite, if you have um, any need for your profession that you like to suggest, um, particularly have, have some kind of preventative focus. And, and any of those needs that are out there. So, um, you know, email those to Jessica or to myself, and we'll we can look at incorporating those into our our training plan moving forward. So, um, much more to come on this topic. As we know, it's a uh, it's a big challenge for for all of us out there, and uh, you know, we're hoping to provide as much uh, helpful training as possible that we can uh, really uh, move things forward in our combined approaches. So. Um, were there any other last final questions or comments that anyone wanted to share before we we wrap up? This is Jessica with AdCare, and I just wanted to let people on the phone know that we have received permission from both of the presenters to post this webinar along with their PowerPoints. Um, so we will be posting that up within the next week and sending it out. Um, I know there were uh, other people interested in attending. Uh, the only difference will be is if uh, someone views the webinar uh, on demand, we're not able to offer continuing education um, for that. But if there's information here and you think it would be worthy of sharing with a colleague or someone else, um, we will be sending out an announcement with a link um, so that they can also hear the webinar and um, see the PowerPoint. So it sounds like um, no more questions are coming up in the panel. Uh, Corey, we really want to thank you for taking the time today and putting together the slides and um, kind of giving that uh, local coalition perspective on how this works and providing your contact information for people to follow up with questions. Thanks for having me. Okay, well, I think we're all set then. Have a good afternoon, everyone.